one of my uh, managers or like, you know, at that time or like a higher up told me, he's like, look, man, if you want to, if you want to be successful in the corporate world, you can have two of three things, but not all three. Right. And those three things are, you can have that corporate climb, right. Where you go from developer to senior developer to director to executive. That's one thing. The second thing is you can have good, you know, mental and physical health. And the third thing is you can have, you know, like a good, you know, family slash social life between these three things, pick two. Like, and it just hit me real hard. Wow. Like, damn, if I really want to climb the, you know, the ladder of success in the corporate world, I'm going to have to either sacrifice my health or my family slash social right. life. And if I didn't want to sacrifice my health or, uh, you know, my uh, social life, then I'm going to have to be okay being stagnant. And that was pretty much like the crystallizing moment for me to realize, you know what, this is, this is not what I want to be doing. And like life is a lot deeper than this title and, and yeah. this particular salary. And um, yeah, uh, you know, long story short, that kind of pushed me towards what I want to do. What's up, everybody? This is the Untapped Potential Podcast. And today we're tapping in with Bozy, a rap artist, real estate entrepreneur and community advocate. What's going on, Bozy? How we doing today? I'm blessed and highly favored. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming show. through. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You've been making some noise out of Seattle, man, doing a lot of things and a lot of positive things for the community. Um, before we dive into what you're doing now, let's start where it all started for you. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about your background and where you come from? Yeah. So, um, you know, I go by the name of Ozi. Um, my full name is Arivoli Adiaman, but, you know, people in Seattle call me either Ariv or Vozi. Yeah, so moved from uh, Tamil Nadu uh, at the age of eight, uh, directly, you know, uh, to uh, ba back then it was, you know, Kirkland. I mean, it's still Kirkland, but um, back when it was, you know, not bougie Kirkland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, lived out there, you know, went to, you know, school out in Seattle, uh, you know, went to UW, you know, took that academic path, you know, went into the corporate world and then eventually, um decided that the entrepreneurship path, you know, filled with creativity is what's for me. And uh, here I am. And uh, yeah, we spoke a lot about kind of our, you know, cultural backgrounds um, before uh, the show began. And uh, yeah, it's a big part of my identity, you know, moving to Seattle as a, an immigrant, you living that life, uh, not having, you know, too many other uh, immigrant kids from your specific background to relate to was something that was, uh, you know, a chip on my shoulder for the longest time. But, um, you know, over the course of time, you know, decided to uh, or later became my, you know, tool of advantage. And, uh, you know, here, we're here right now. So, yeah. So eventually, you know, leaving the corporate world, I decided to uh, I decided I wanted to get into some form of entrepreneurship and figured, you know, I want to get into selling some sort of product or service. Thought about, you know, well, what product can I sell? What service can I get myself into and realize, well, real estate is the biggest product that exists. Um, if I can be in a place like Microsoft and, you know, push out, you know, software products uh, or be in T-Mobile, push out software products to the world, maybe I can do something a little bit more tangible. And that instinctive thought was what led me towards real estate. And uh, yeah, over the, you know, initial couple of years of doing real estate, I decided, well, I realized that I didn't just get into this entrepreneurship thing to, you know, make money and, and uh, you know, be an industry professional or just that. I wanted to, you know, fully express myself and be who I am. So, um, and music had, had always been a part of who I was, you know, growing up, you know, being that immigrant kid, hip hop was my, um, you know, guidance uh, to this culture right. and, uh, and this country and, um, you know, making hip hop music had always been a big part of my identity and, and who I was. So I figured, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put myself out there as an artist and, you know, see what the yeah. world thinks about my skills. And uh, that also became a part of, you know, my brand and identity along the years and, um, Additionally, you know, coming from the immigrant background, you know, living in like a, you know, 700 square feet house with you know, right. two families, like one bathroom, you know, growing up, like I, I feel for those that come from that type of background, but don't have the immediate, um, you know, reference to, to right. succeed. And for me, you know, being that reference, however I can, was always uh, a big part of what I'm doing. And um, yeah, we can dig into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because we did talk a little bit, you know, off the record about, yeah. like, our backgrounds and how we relate a lot. It's crazy, man, Yeah, you know, but I think it's really important for, you know, young kids that come from that background to see people that, you know, make the most out of their circumstances and do make it out because, obviously, you know, we're living proof that you could come from, you know, that immigrant background and still make it and do big things, right? 
but I think it's so important to see somebody that's doing it. Mm -hmm. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. What was it like for you when you were that kid? You know, who were you looking up to and what was it like? Yeah. Just, you know, what was your mindset like in that time? When I first came to the United States, to be honest, there was initially, like, I remember, you know, ba being back home in Tamil Nadu. And, you know, my pops actually came here two years before he moved the rest of the family. Actually, a year and a half, two years before he moved the rest of the family. And uh, during that time, there was obviously, like, you know, missing my pops. And mm -hmm. that was combined with the feeling of I'm about to go to this whole new landscape. And initially speaking, there was, like, this feeling of excitement that I had to be in this, you know, new landscape and, 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 uh, and, and learn, you know, like, this new culture. And uh, immediately upon coming to the United States, I realized that excitement was mixed with, uh, well, rather, like, that excitement was met with, oh, whoa, like, I don't really understand the culture here. I don't understand yeah. like the type of music people are listening to or the references or the jokes they're making. And uh, initially there was that kind of challenge of trying to figure things out. And um, and yeah, over the course of time, like, you know, as I mentioned, it was hip hop that really was kind of the bridging gap yeah. between like, OK, well, I don't understand the culture, but, you know, I'm going to listen to this music and and, you know, create a set of create like confidence for myself through this music. You know, really even learn the language uh, through right. this music and um and yeah, it just kept going. But like over the course of years, I started, it, it, it started with, um, you know, a little bit of fear of not knowing the culture to, uh, you know, like maybe even during my teenage years, feelings of insecurity, not yeah. feeling like I belong, you know, feelings of imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. all of that. But, you know, being an immigrant child, as I mentioned, you know, living in the type of environment I lived in, success was like a really big part of what I wanted to do. You know, I'm also the firstborn in my family. So I was, you know, firsthand able to witness how hard my parents worked. And um, I, I recognized, you know, being, you know, eight years old coming into this country, what my life was like back home, you know, how, how happy, you know, my family was back home. And then, you know, coming to this country and then seeing like all of that changed, it just put a chip on my shoulder to be successful. And I wanted to be successful. And uh, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know that meant the path of entrepreneurship or, or, you know, like music or, you know, community involvement. I just knew that. Like you have to just get a good job and, and get a good pay and boom, you're successful. Right. Right. Yeah. And, um, and that's what I did. I was always a good student, you know, going up, growing up, um, like in high school, I was an honors kid. As I mentioned, I went to UW, uh, you know, applied for a degree in electrical engineering, got into that degree. I majored with that degree and, um, yeah, over a course of time, if, you know, I got, I got a job at uh, this company called SAP out in Miami. And then I was like traveling back and forth between Miami and Dallas like, and then around like 2013, 2014 time period, I decided, you know, I miss Seattle. So I came back to Seattle, worked at Microsoft and then uh, consulted with uh, uh, T-Mobile via this company called Accenture. And yeah, during this time period, I was really just, uh, you know, I had that at that point, the coveted, you know, like good income, good vacation package and all of it. And the rest of society is telling me, oh, you made it. You're successful. Like the American dream. Right? Yeah, like, I, mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. it felt like. You know, they were telling me, you made it. You hit that American dream. Even my parents were telling me, oh, like, you know, all our sacrifices with you was not worth it because of where you're at. Right. And But it hit me like, yo, that's not, it, this doesn't feel like it. This doesn't feel right. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, I remember when I was, um, like, at my last corporate gig, one of my uh, managers or, like, you know, at that time or, like, a higher up told me, he's like, look, man, if you want to be successful in the corporate world, you can have two of three things but not all three, right? And those three things are, you can have that corporate climb, right? Where you go from developer to senior developer to director to executive. That's one thing. The second thing is you can have good, you know, mental and physical health. And the third thing is you can have, you know, like a good, you know, family slash social life. Between these three things, pick two. Like, and it just hit me real hard. Wow. Like, damn, if I really want to climb the, you know, the ladder of success in the corporate world, I'm going to have to either sacrifice my health or my family slash social right. life. And if I didn't want to sacrifice my health or, uh, you know, my uh, social life, then I'm going to have to be okay being stagnant. And um, I thought about, you know, most of the successful people in the corporate world. And I realized like, you know, 99% of them were sacrificing one of the other two. And that was pretty much like the crystallizing moment for me to realize, you know what, this is, this is not what I want to be doing. And like life is a lot deeper than this title and, and yeah. this particular salary. And um, yeah, uh, you know, long story short, that kind of pushed me towards what I want to do. What you're doing now. What I'm and doing I now, think yeah. that's, that's like, that's a big risk too, right? Yeah. Because at the same time, like, you don't even know what that next step looks like, right? Mm. Coming where you come from. And also, you're also risking, like, 
letting down your parents who are so proud of where yeah, you're at, absolutely. right? Absolutely. They're probably looking at you like, are you crazy? Like, why <laughs> yeah. are you going to leave this? Like, yeah. we work so hard for this. But, you know, that I think that says a lot about you because that, that means that you're willing to take risks, you know? Mm. You're willing to leave what you worked hard for to go for better. And I think that's what it takes to be successful, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Let's um, talk about that a little bit more, the, the family aspect, too. Because yeah. from my experience, like, Indian families tend to be really conservative, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you switched over to music, specifically rap, like, what was their perception of that? Like, did they encourage that? Were they confused by it? Yeah. Um, I think, to, to take it back, right, um, so I was always interested in, you know, making music. Yeah. So my parents weren't too surprised that I continued making music. But to now make this you know, part of my identity and career that definitely, you know, came, came with some, um, you know, challenges and just kind of, you know, differences of just perspectives that had to be later cleared. Yeah. But to give you guys perspective, right. Unlike most, you know, traditional, you know, Brown families, I will say that, yeah, my parents were, you know, strict in the sense that, you know, they wanted me to get good grades and mm -hmm. do my, you know, do my thing properly. But for the most part, they allowed me to be me always. Like, cool. you know, all the decisions I made to, to go to college, to get a degree in electrical engineering, you know, to get that, you know, coveted, you know, job at the technical jobs and all these things that I did. Um, of course, they encouraged it, but they never forced me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think over the course of time and also being the firstborn, like my parents always felt like, you know, I could handle myself. Like I, I figured out how to, you know, go through high school by myself. I figured out the whole, you know, SAT by myself. I figured out how yeah. to apply to colleges by myself. I got my, you know, all these things I did by myself for the most part. And um, around the time, you know, I was like three, four years into the corporate world, saved up my money, saved up some money, uh, you know, paid off my college loans. I'm at a point where I'm definitely, you know, 100% self-sustaining. So when I told them, hey, look, uh, like, you know, I'm still young. I have the ability to, you know, go back into the corporate world if I want to, but I'm going to try something different. And if I don't try it now, I'm never going to have the opportunity to try it. And, uh, I'm grateful to say that they were, you know, very supportive of, of my decision to move towards this field. I, don't get me wrong. Toward the beginning, I would be like, um, you know, trying to do real estate and they would still be telling me, you should, you know, you should still be applying to jobs in the side <laughs> right. and That's all a, these a safety net. Yeah. Almost, yeah. You know, they didn't get it, but, um, yeah. but they did allow me that time. And I told them, I'm like, just give me like a couple of years. I'm going to try to figure this out. Absolute yeah. worst case scenario. I don't figure this out. Then then, you know, I go back to, you know, where I, what I was doing. And to give you perspective, during that time, I wasn't really talking to them about music. Like, in my mind, I wanted to do music, but I wasn't really talking to them too much about music. It was more along the lines of sustaining myself financially through real estate entrepreneurship. Right. So that was my primary focus. And even mm -hmm. myself, I hadn't gotten past the insecurity of being like a rapper or being a music artist yeah. still, just because it was still a brand new type of venture that I had begun. And, uh, I want to say, so I began my real estate career, like, you know, full time sometime in 2016. And it wasn't until the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, um, that I decided, okay, now I'm going to publicly put myself out there as an artist. And, uh, up until that time, I wasn't doing that just because of the awkwardness of being a real estate entrepreneur who's melanated, you know, going to these like, you know, primarily, uh, right. you know, like, like different culture, like, you know, Caucasian themed, you know, real estate events and all yeah. these things. Um, it was, it was awkward toward the beginning, but over a year and a half time period of me being in real estate full time, I had some successes within the real estate landscape that I could publicly show. And it made me feel like, well, who can tell me anything anymore? Like, yeah. you know, I did this without, I mean, until then, like up, up in the successes that I achieved in the first year and a half, I felt confident that, you know, these came due to my own efforts and really just, you know, making it out the mud. And at this point, it's like, you know, like that confidence of just being an entrepreneur just grew in me to a point where I'm like, well, I'm going to try it just being myself and then see what happens. And uh, that what that's what, you know, initially uh, gave me the motivation to push toward the music path. Yeah. And by the time I had gotten into, you know, making music and, you know, putting myself out there as an artist, my parents were super proud. Like I'd never received any resistance from them ever that's about awesome. my yeah. music. So uh, but it took a while. It took a while to get there. And it was always a cultivation of confidence with myself and also telling my folks, like, you're good. Like, yeah. I got you. Don't even worry about Don't me. Don't even worry about That's me. Good. I'm good. No, I like how you said that, though. You're like, 
I'm going to try being myself and see what happens, yeah. you know? And it's mm-hmm. it's kind of like, I can relate to that in, like, the terms of imposter syndrome. Yeah. Because I feel like I face that, too, sometimes. Like, I enter some spaces, and I'm like, oh, man, like, I got to fit this cookie-cutter image of what it looks like to be a successful person. I work in finance. Okay. So I'm like, I got to look like a, a finance professional. You almost and have to role play. A right. Bit. And there's a certain idea of what that looks like, you know, speaking a certain way, dressing mm-hmm. a certain way, the doing this talk. a certain way. And I'm sure you face that in real estate, right? Absolutely. And even in, you know, going into be, becoming a rapper too. Like, it's kind of weird. Like, you're like, man, how do I do this, like, correctly? Yeah. And it's kind of like you you get to a point, though, where it becomes so exhausting trying to, like, fit this role where you're kind of just like, you know what? I'm going to just be myself and see what happens. Like you said, and I feel like that's a beautiful thing. And like, it's so cool to see that realization. It's like, I could be myself and it's cool because there's no one else like me. Mm. I'm going to be what I'm going to be, but I'm, you know, I'm going to be, you know, in your case, real estate, but I'm going to do it my way. Absolutely. Yeah. Toward the beginning, it was like, it was super awkward, but then, you know, over a course of time, I realized, hold on a second, at least within the Seattle landscape, based on what I knew, especially at that time, I'm the only person in the real estate industry that is actively pursuing a music career and i'm the only person pursuing a music career that is actively in the real estate industry and it was like i said it was awkward toward the beginning but over a course of time i realized this is my this is my strength this kind of you know living within both of these identities i'm sure i'm not the only person that has these two interests i'm the i'm the one that's actively pursuing it and um i I can get into some stories about how it made a lot more sense later on and i've mentioned this in you know other interviews and things but you know a lot of like artists they create music, create a big enough brand around their music, and then they start distributing, you know, products like merch, yeah. merchandise right. and things like that, right? And I felt like I was doing the same thing. I'm creating, you know, music and using that music as a marketing vehicle for people to come into my brand. And when they come into my brand, they see that I have other offerings like my real estate services. Okay. I can't tell you the amount of times where just off of an Instagram, you know, freestyle on, you know, some rap freestyle or whatever, someone came into my profile, you know, and then, and then sent me a DM later on, like, yo, like, I love your rap, but by the way, like, that house you got listed, you know, I want to make an offer on it. That's crazy. That's so wild. it's like, so to think about, like, like, if I think about the amount of, like, clients and actual, like, financial opportunity that I've gotten because of music, it's actually kind of crazy. It's just, it's just, it's because of music, but through another lane. It's like amplifying right. your voice almost in this different type of market, but yeah. also kind of generating leads for you to obviously convert into sales and things absolutely, like that. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think like, you know, as, you know, like salesmen, you know, people that are any, in any sort of sales industry, one of the biggest things that uh, you're really selling is not the product itself, yourself. You're selling mm-hmm. yourself, right? right. And, um, and I think for me, you know, making music, it like, and this is just my theory, is that the people that, you know, listen to my music or saw who I was, they felt some sense of, you know, realness or, Hey, this, I know this guy through my music. And yeah. by the time I'm, you know, by the time they feel that, and then they realize, Hey, I'm also a real estate entrepreneur and, you know, I can help them, you know, buy and sell their house and, you know, show them how to make investments. They felt like, Oh, you know what? I know this guy. I trust this guy. So I think that element of trust is created through me putting myself out there and being vulnerable mm-hmm. with my music and just, you know, putting my you know emotions out. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think it's a, uh, like my whole theory is, wow, like now I get to be myself and that draws people to me. And when they, and when I draw certain people to me, I can have, you know, these certain subsect of, you know, interest with the audience that I could, you know, capitalize off of and help them and, and right. vice versa. So that's my whole kind of theory. So how do you balance those two lives? Though? You kind of, you live a double life in yeah. a way where you're an entrepreneur and you're focused on succeeding in that life, but also you're balancing you know, your goals as an artist, as a musician. Yeah. To, to take it back, right? Around when I first began all of this, I wrote a mission statement and I still live by that mission statement. And that mission statement is that, you know, Vozi is a company that integrates real estate investing and entrepreneurship with culture, music, and technology to inspire positive change in the community. So right toward the beginning, even though I wasn't rapping toward the beginning, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I knew that there was a deep passion towards it. And I always, you know, when I kind of jump from the corporate world into what I'm doing now, I told myself that there's really three big verticals that I see myself in. And that's in the real estate landscape, that's in the music landscape, and that's, you know, giving back to the community however I can. So with that said, to answer your question, it wasn't, to me, to be honest, like none of it really feels like work. You know what I mean? Of course, there's work and there's stressful moments and, and all of that. But it's like, it's, I have to remind myself that you know, these are the choices I made for myself. Right. And um, one one thing that I do is I don't, I do my best not to, uh, you know, 
I get mad at myself if I don't set, if I don't yeah. do something that I say I'm going to do a particular time. And I do tend to prioritize, you know, my goals based on what's, you know, immediately, uh, more relevant mm -hmm. at the time. And, uh, and I'm also grateful to say, you know, I have a, like a solid group of individuals and partners that I work with that allow me to be me. And, um, as far as making music goes, man, it's like, you know, just living in the era we live in with technology and, you know, the ability to, you know, listen to beats or, you know, write wherever you can. It's like, I'm constantly just, you know, thinking about like some bars or some flows or, right. you know, it's always yeah. kind of in the background. I got like a Google docs on my phone, just full of, full of ideas. Like it's, you know, and it's, so it just kind of constantly builds on. And, um, you know, I try to hit the studio at least, you know, once or twice a week, just, just to, you know, put some shots up mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, uh, you know, see where that takes me. And, um, and yeah, I just, you know, it's, I just try not to beat myself up over, you know, specific, uh, like, you know, timelines and things of that nature. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Would yeah. you, would you say you're a perfectionist? I would say, I think like a lot of creatives are perfectionists. And I think that's a, that is like an advantage as well as a disadvantage to a lot yeah. of creatives. I'm doing my best to adopt the mentality that done is better than perfect. You yeah, know what I mean? I like that. For the longest time, I was just like, man, I just got to get it right. It's got to be perfect. The sound has to be this. Like if I'm like, you know, doing like, you know, like any sort of real estate marketing, I should know what I'm talking about before I get into it, all these things. And then I just kind of got into this mentality. Like, you know what? Just if I get put in a situation of having to perform, the worst thing that's going to happen is I fail. I'm not going to die. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, and it's like, even with like right now, I have like 20 songs that I should be putting out, but I'm just like, there's just a little bit of like, you know, the, the perfectionist uh, in me that that is preventing me from like or that keeps me like, you know, constantly calibrating and like refining it a little yeah. bit more. But I but I do my best not to be to gotcha. answer your question. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel that. Who who inspires you? Who do you draw inspiration from? Shoot, man. Um, first and foremost, you know, my parents, just yeah. because like I, I've seen how hard they've worked in this country, how, you know, how they've adapted to cultural barriers, language barriers, like how to figure out how to pay taxes before Google, you know, like how yeah. to figure out how to pay your electricity bill before, like, you know, like you just Google, how do you do this? Like, you know what I mean? Like you have to ask people or like, yeah. you know, read books or something Absolutely. about it. Crazy. So I've like, I, I remember like before we had the internet, like I remember before we had a car, like, like my pops would, you know, take the entire family to like the library and, and he'd be like applying to jobs at the library while I'm like, you know, doing my homework or working on things. And right, damn, you know what man. I mean? So these are, so those memories um, and, and, and still having like, you know, like, and during those times, like my folks, they would still have the optimism of like, we're in America, we can make it here, you know, all these things mm -hmm. and uh, how they just never, you know, gave up on, on working hard. To me, that's easily the biggest inspiration. Yeah. Right. And outside of that, I can draw towards just, you know, a bunch of people, a bunch of, you know, famous people, you know, artists, entrepreneurs, you know, things of that nature. But that's, that's, you know, that's just, that's, everybody has that. Right. Right. Um, but I'm grateful to have, you know, folks that truly showed me the concept of hard work while maintaining the optimism. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that benefit of coming from that immigrant background too. Right. Cause you could see your parents experiences and then you get into a position where you're facing a tough time and you kind of just think back, you know what, if my parents made it out of that, I'm cool. I'm good. Like I can make yeah. it through this. You almost 100%. like uh, put a benchmark against like somebody else's worst experiences of which would be like your parents of just struggling. And you're like, you know what? I don't have it that bad. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, I want to talk a little bit about Tamil rap. Let's talk about like where that originated from. For those of you that don't know, um, you know, Tamil rap originated from a, a different part of, of India, but it's, it's, I guess you can explain it better than I can. Yeah. No, first of all, I'm just super grateful that, like I'm in Seattle and like there are these two non Tamil guys asking me about Tamil. Like to me, that in itself is like I'm yeah. doing my job right. You know what yeah, I mean? If, if people and can to be honest, with that. we never even heard of Tamil rap before you yeah. had you came here as a guest on the <laughs> show. So yeah. it was a learning experience for both of us. Right. And and I always love listening to new music yeah. and stuff. So to give you perspective, right? So I am Tamil. That's my ethnic, you know, language, ancestral identity. And uh, we come from we're people that are, you know, based out of uh, Southern India, Northern Sri Lanka, but there's around like 90 million of us like scattered around the globe. Wow. And to give you perspective, if you Google what is the oldest spoken language in the world, like you, you'll like the result is Tamil. Like, oh, wow. You can Google it yourself. Yeah. So it is literally one of the oldest languages and cultures in the world. 
And uh, there is a deep sense of pride and identity that comes with a lot of the Tamil people. And without getting too much into the, you know, the geopolitical reasons, I will say that Tamil people are a little bit uh, more of the oppressed class of the, in, of the people in the Indian subcontinent. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And I would say over the past, um, so to give you perspective, when I first came to the United States also, uh, you know, my, my folks are super deep into the Tamil culture and they ensured that all we spoke at home was Tamil. And my, my mom, she made me like read and write a page of Tamil like every day for like wow, a few boy. years after coming to the United States. So she ensured that, you know, I never forgot the language and the culture just because she noticed that there weren't too many other, um, you know, Tamil folks for me to interact with. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but over, so I kept that in me. And then I always knew that I'm Tamil. I didn't have too many other, you know, Tamil, uh, you know, reference points to identify with. And that was that for a long time. And then I think sometime in like 2013, 14 time period, I started noticing that the internet, social media started bringing these 90 million, you know, Tamil diaspora people into a platform. Now there's like, you know, YouTubers that are Tamil and, and uh, right. talking about Tamil culture, like musicians that are Tamil talking about Tamil culture. And it started being a thing where I could, I could literally, you know, type in, you know, Tamil culture or Tamil, whatever, and things started coming up. So um, for me, it's like, you know, growing up in Seattle without too many other Tamil people, I kind of put it upon myself, like, you know what, like, I'm not sure when it was, but I just realized, you know what, I need to show this city what, you know, Tamil is. And if there's nobody else, you know, right. representing on a, on a mainstream, like, you know, cultural like western cultural level well shoot like why can't it be me so that was my mm -hmm. thought around it and um uh so as years progressed like i was always like making music in english just because that's the language i you know grew up around and it was easier for me to uh you know make music and write lyrics right. in english and um over the course of the years like i started noticing that when i started making my music it was the diaspora tamil people that started gravitating towards me more so than, you know, the local Seattle folks oh, and people that I had grown up around. And then that was kind of like an aha moment for me. It's like, huh, like, like the same way you guys are like, oh, you're mm -hmm. kind of, you know, unique in the sense that you're, you're doing, you know, real estate and music and, you know, doing community yeah. stuff in Seattle. Like if you kind of zoom out into the overall Tamil community, it's like, I feel that they also feel that is unique for me to be doing what I'm doing as a Tamil person. Mm -hmm. Right. So that kind of drew me further, you know, into the culture and, uh, it amplified what I already felt about my, you know, culture and language. And to a point now where I would say most people in Seattle that know me, they have to know that I'm Tamil. Mm -hmm. Like, otherwise, like, I, I find it like, you know, it's like without, without uh, being disrespectful, I find it disrespectful to me. Like, if they don't know that I'm Tamil. Right. If they know me long enough, like, you better know I'm Tamil. That's kind of the, yeah. uh, the mentality that I kind of take towards, uh, uh, you know, just my identity. And, uh, yeah, to answer your question, you know, over the course of time, I realized, you know what, like I am, you know, fluent in the language. And even though I don't have too many opportunities to speak the language in this yeah. city outside of, you know, my, my folks, um, maybe this is an opportunity for me to connect further with Tamil people and immerse myself in this art. And, uh, then I started, you know, rapping as well in mm. uh, Tamil and I started kind of putting my own twist on it. Like, I don't know all the Tamil words sometimes, like, you know, as well as English. So maybe I'll do like a. A Tamil English, you know, hybrid style. It's like almost like Spanglish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that <laughs> yeah. started becoming like, you know, a part of my, you know, style and identity because yeah. I am a Western Tamil man. Right. Right. And um, yeah. So, you know, moving forward now, I look at, you know, my Tamil identity as like a big part of who I am. And there's a lot of really cool, you know, you know, like Tamil people, whether in the art scene or like the political scene or even, you know, like the just you know corporate scene whatever it is like you look at the ceo of google he's tamil you look at the oh i didn't know that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. sundar is tamil yep. wow yeah okay. sundar picha is tamil uh you look at uh the vice president of the united states her mom is tamil oh yep, wow yep. but oh, the wow. thing is it's like that's the thing like you look at you look at mia the artist she's tamil like but it gets kind of the tamil identity it, gets it just lost. gets gets mixed in with the overall indian hey. yeah. identity and the crazy thing is like without getting into too much of the politics like India became India like in, in the 1900s, right? Before mm -hmm. that, it was just a bunch of tribes and, and, you know, people just living in that land. So who is to call all of them, you know, one particular thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I think, you know, being Tamil is just a big part of my identity. And there's just so much like vast, like, you know, like history and just richness right. to our culture that, you know, I've made it like a life goal to be, uh, you know, a Tamil enthusiast and, you know, teach people as much as I can about, you know, my culture and uh, my cool. identity. 
Yeah. And I'm hoping that my work is, you know, whether that's through my real estate or, yeah. or music or, uh, you know, community work to be representative of that. In fact, the most recent, uh, you know, property that my partners and I purchased, we bought it under an LLC called Vetri Ventures LLC. And Vetri in Tamil means victory. So it's oh, like I try to incorporate cool. as much, you know, Tamil as I can in, uh, in what I do. And it's something that makes me super proud. I'm sure y'all can relate. That's awesome. really cool, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're really doing it through your music big yeah. time, too, because you actually rap in in the Tamil language. Um, we can pull some of it up right here. <laughs> you guys went crazy. You guys are really digging. Hey, <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like Nardwar. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. And we were talking about this, too, the production quality of all your videos. You can tell you put in a lot of work, a lot of detail. There's a I lot of attention it. here. What does bangram mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, bangram just literally means like crazy. It's getting crazy. It's a lot. Getting crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. Lot. I think that's so cool, man. Like how you're how you're doing this. It's so unique, you know. And like you said, you take a lot of pride in your culture and you're really putting on. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is such a cool way to do it. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all truly. You know, for for just non Tamil people to recognize and ask me about it to me, like that means the world. And I'm right. sure any Tamil person that's listening to it, they're like, yo, these guys are like not Tamil, but they're talking about <laughs> what Tamil is, right? To me, that's just, it's super cool, man. Yo, yeah. And this is what I love about the podcast. We learn something new, I feel like, every time we oh, have yeah. a new guest on. Yeah, yeah. no. Nah. Talk, let's talk about the production, though, man. Yeah. This, is this is what we were talking about video. specifically. Yeah. This is really well made. Do you edit your photos or, or video, or do you... Uh, um, hire someone or yeah no it's it's like for the most part man it's just i'm grateful to say that i have a lot of you know videographer and just media you know homies yeah. that have uh that have just you know tapped into the journey along the years and uh you know i usually have an idea of how i want my thing to look like and then we just have you know open discussion around it and and you know we just put it together but I'm really grateful that y'all are saying this, but me personally, I feel like, man, I could still be doing so much better and I could still be doing so much more because I don't have two, you know, compared to like other artists that have been, you know, doing what they're doing. I still feel like I could up my game. And um, that's a perfectionist in it. It's that, perf it's that perfectionist <laughs> mentality. I'm grateful for what I've done so far, yeah. but I know how much more there is. You know? Yeah, and yeah. I, the second verse on this is pretty much all Tamil. The first yeah. verse is English. I was just gonna say when yeah. we when we skip through, you can hear him, uh, you know, Vozi yeah. rapping in Tamil. And you're like you said, you're mixing in English words and and all that yeah. in the lyrics, which is awesome. And I don't know what you're saying, man, but I know you're spitting. So <laughs> <laughs> even Max is just you know digging oh, it's it. Cool yeah. though, I see I see him bobbing his head yeah. like yeah yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, that's, oh, that's awesome though man and so yeah and those are my so that's like one of my favorite Tamil restaurants in the city and i just you know got them to you know be a part of the movement What's it called? put them on yeah bro it's called justaurant in bellevue j-u-s-d-a-r-u-a-n-t justaurant it's like restaurant but just around i'm gonna have to try it for please sure. please go there and get the chicken 65 chicken 65 yep, yes, yep. sir you love that let's oh, do yeah. it yeah, is it harder for you to rap in Tamil, or do you feel like it kind of comes natural for you? It, it depends on this. I would say, for the most part, it's way, way easier for me to rap in English, just because, yeah. like, I grew up listening to, you know, just hip hop, yeah. and you know, I grew up in America, so it's just, it's just a lot. I'm, I'm around English all the time, so it's just way easier. But depending on certain songs, it'll just, you know, like sometimes it just comes to me, and right. and you know, when it comes to me, I try to, you know, capture that moment and write as many Tamil words as possible. And, um, yeah, I'm at a point now where I'm doing, I'm trying to watch more Tamil movies, like listen to more Tamil music right. just to like fill my brain up with, uh, you know, Tamil words and, and phrases and things like that. But yeah, to answer your question, it's definitely easier to rap in English, right. but, but it's like everybody does that in English. So I'm trying to look at, yeah. I'm trying to look at, you know, what my unique offering is and trying to, you know, develop my skill set within that. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome, yeah. man. You know, in Spanish, I think it's kind of funny because... Uh, Mexicans, I'm Mexican. So yeah. Mexicans who speak Spanish in the U.S., the Spanish is a little different than the Spanish that's spoken in Mexico. Just mm. because you know you you come up with a little bit of slang, but yeah. it kind of just becomes a part of the language. Yeah, is that the same case in Tamil? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's it's a little different. I mean, I think like in the United States per se, um, it's like there aren't. It's 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 a different culture in the United States. Right. Like, I I feel like 
the way Tamil is spoken in the United States by a lot of the Tamil people here, it's like made fun of back home, if that makes sense. Yep. Oh, really? You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's like we're like we're like whitewashed. Yeah, you know, can, crazy. we make fun, we it's make the same fun thing. Of, uh, yeah, no, no sapo, no, no sapo kids, no That's sapo kids. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like it's saying like words in like American Spanish. Yeah, but it's like saying them. It's not the right. It's not the proper way to. I speak feel it. that. So you go back to Mexico and people are like, "Oh, that's a no sabo kid." Yeah, like, absolutely, they can tell right away. It's like yeah. blood in the water, bro. But absolutely, cool. but that's for the crazy. most part, I'm. I feel like you know maybe my parents would disagree with it, but I feel like if I go back home, like. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'll just blend right in. Pretty mm. good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but, but I feel like the folks that like really, really are there, if they like really start speaking to me and like, like, you know, start understanding the nuances or like yeah. my just attitude or whatever, they might understand that I'm not actually from, Right. I didn't grow up back home. I feel like it comes down to the sense of humor and the slang too. Oh, definitely. Like that local humor, that local slang. Yeah. You can't teach that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's but different. I will say because of social media, because of, you know, just things, you know, content and, you know, things being more accessible to everybody. Right. I do notice that even back home, there is like a big splash of that Western culture that didn't exist before. Now you have like uh, people back home that, you know, know the, the modern hip hop artists and they know what, yeah. you know, like, just you know like the words like oh i'm gonna slide up out of here or like you know just just that makes sense l- yeah. just things that you wouldn't expect them to like naturally know like you, you notice that like that is part of their vernacular now and it's Interesting. like i do see the world becoming smaller through kind of the cultural uh, globalization bridge. yeah 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 that's yeah. nice though we're mo- way more interconnected definitely so going to your ig too yeah man. You, you got a pretty solid following here on um, Instagram. Yeah. I was going through your page a little bit, and I don't know if there's anything that you want to focus on. Yeah, feel free to call it out. Um, so, for, uh, so let me let me talk about. Um, there's there's a few different things I'm proud of. So, uh, we'll speak about a couple things that happened this summer that I'm really grateful for. Yeah. So, one of them is uh, you know my partners and I we bought a uh, commercial property. That's what uh, I wanted to ask you. Downtown about. Seattle. It's on Second. Scroll down a little, bit. A little bit. It's scroll down. down to the right. right to the right. Oh, yep, that's it right there. That's the building. If you just click one more to the right on the next picture, boom. So that's my folks. Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, that's yep. Nice. They're super excited, super proud parents. Yeah. So it's on second and, you know, battery. And, um, you know, until someone, you know, challenges me, I want to claim that I might be the youngest and most melanated person to own property in that block, at least downtown. Yeah, and, that's uh, crazy. Yeah. So it's a, it's a 49 unit hotel building. This, this building comes with a lot of, you know, unique history. It's 17,000 square feet um, in uh, downtown Seattle. And yeah, man, I'm blessed to say that this is something that, you know, we own. That's, that's awesome, man. You're really doing it and you're really making your dreams happen. And I think that's what we really want to people that who come on the show. You're that p- type of person who's really doing it out there and yep. put themselves out there to take that risk. I appreciate y'all. And so what are you planning to do with this property? Still make it into a hotel or are you going to rent it out? Yeah, so we're actually um, in the process of uh, doing a bulk lease of the 49 units to a separate organization that'll be paying us, um, you know, like rent. Mm, And that'll cover the mortgage. And that'll still leave um, certain sections of the building uh, available. And we're planning on starting some businesses there, whether it's like, you know, a restaurant or a club or a bar, uh, whatever the case may be. But we're still exploring... um, uh, you know, the full monetization potential of that building. But, um, but the remaining 49 units, yeah, we're going to rent them out. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And, and one additional thing I'd like to, you know, point to on my page that I'm proud of that happened this summer. Well, if you scroll up a little bit, well, one did sorry, before we just, there's a few different things that happened. I'm just remembering. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Marshall law band, I'm not sure if you guys know who that is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so he, he had this, uh, like crazy thing that happened every Friday in Fremont called the Fremont Fridays. Oh, y'all, yeah. are, y'all are familiar with that, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, you know, for me, one of the big testaments of, wow, I'm really making it as an artist, yeah. you know, here is that I got the opportunity to headline uh, at that show. If you can just click, you can like, this one right here. Yeah. That's just me rapping. Like that's just me, you know, but, but it's at this, uh, Fremont Fridays event. Yep, it's at the Fremont Fridays event. And it's in, uh, next to LTDs, right? It's at the LTD bar and grill. That's correct. There we go. All yeah. right, let me see if I can turn on the sound. Hella spending. Whoa. Whoa. Flashback to being, hold up, hold up, hold up. Flashback to being intoxicated at Denny's. A late night six years ago, I was venting to some people who could care less if I was winning. I had to boss up on them, leave their heads spinning. Yeah. 
What am I supposed to do? Cause really I'm the only one that's doing what I do. I'ma yeah. kill it all 2021. The smart money's betting on me. The rest are fully dumb. I'm chasing my billion dollar vision until it's fully done. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Oh, man, that's <laughs> cool. Respect. You got a lot of love in this comment music. section that's too right here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful, bro. Love this it. is all love. It's all love. But yeah, that was a you know a dope like moment of just like, wow, like I'm actually out here. There's like hundreds yeah. of people in the crowd. Wow, yeah. Like, it looks yeah. like a packed show. Yeah, it was crazy, this. yeah. A lot of people out here, man. Yeah, bro. It's click, click, click. Yup. It's uh, no. It was. That's I was. Cool. That was just a moment. I was just like infinitely grateful for. Shout out Marshall for giving me the opportunity. And uh, yeah, man, this was a vibe. That's awesome. So that was a dope moment that happened. You know, this summer. It was to me. It was just. This was the result of just you know following oh, your dreams. Right yup. Shout out Marshall. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and then and then if you scroll up a one more, so one one additional thing I'm proud of. If you scroll up a little bit more, scroll up, scroll up to the right. Yep, down, 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 down. Jortala, click on that right real quick. Yep. No, no, not that one. Next one. Other one. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Right so now. this. So let me give you a little bit of kind of perspective on how this happened. So there's this really dope artist back home in the motherland called Asal Kolad, right? And um, I I kind of caught wind of what he's doing like back Bye. back uh, in like January February time period and. Um, and, and he had dropped, and there's this other uh, homie, shout out Afro, who's this guy that kind of produced this song for him. And they had put out this song called Jotala. And I was like, yo, this song goes crazy. And um, I got to connect with uh, Asal Kolad, who's the artist in the song, and Afro. But I told Asal, I was like, yo, man, uh, you got to make a music video for this song. Trust me, this is a banger. Like, you got to just go crazy on it. And uh, he's like, yeah, I, you know, I will. But right now, I'm just like, you know, low on funds. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, just let me know when you're ready. Uh, I want to I want to help you know produce that. If you need the funds right. for it, I got you. I just think that this is a cultural hit and it's gonna live forever. You need to do something with it. He's like, all right, bet. When time comes, I'll ask you. And then time came. He asked me, and I'm like, boom, just transfer the money to him. He made the video, and uh, like I don't know, I'm not sure how many views it has on YouTube at the moment. But it's not like, last I checked, it was like 3.3 3 million views or whatever. What? Yeah. No way. Oh, he's blowing pull up right up. now. Yeah, pull it up. Go to YouTube. Oh, 3.6 now, right? That's yep. crazy. Yo, that's, this is nuts. And this just came out uh, this yep, past August. Yup, yup, yup. So barely not a month into it. months. Yeah. Not even, yeah. So this is like the classic, you know, sound of back home. Like, this is like the culture living at large. I'm going to like that's the video real quick. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Help Might as well subscribe too. Can you put it full screen? There you go. Once. There you go. Let's get it. Man, that's crazy. Shout out Ati Culture. Damn. The transition on this too. Yo, this is a production. Where is this? This is uh, in a place called Chennai back home. It's, oh, it's one of the largest okay. cities in the Indian subcontinent. Oh, wow. And that's where he's from. And what's dope about this artist too is that he comes from, you know, the more like, like let me, like the more gangster area, I will oh, say, from back home. So he comes from an area where folks are typically like, you know, like more afraid of or feel that it's like, you know, lower class or whatever. So for him to be creating what he's doing back there, but, you know, and and then giving that culture out to the rest of the Tamil diaspora, it's actually huge. It's elevating that. So yeah, crazy. so I will say this is probably one of the biggest songs like within the Tamil landscape, I will say, at least from my perspective, yeah. this year. And for yeah. me to have a small part in, you know, making this what it is, is just something I'm just extremely Yo, grateful that is for. Huge. Is this his biggest hit so far? Like definitely, definitely. Wow. Damn, I, I, I will man. say this is not his last though. Damn. Yeah, bro. So he killed it, and it's uh, this is a moment that I'm just like, I'm extremely proud of just to be associated in some sense. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Just and be proud of your culture, man. Absolutely. Like, is what is the song about? It. What is what's kind of like? Yeah, walk us through it a little bit. Of what he's talking about. Here. Uh, he, like to give you hold on, and, and then like you know, I'm grateful to see like my name will come up at some point, at on the uh, bottom left. The end. Oh yeah, it'll pop up oh, right here. Yeah, yep. right here, Vosy. Yeah, yeah, it's clean. That's a really well made video. Yeah, I'm great. That's forever. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. content lives forever, and if it's already right. at, you know 3.6 million views, True, and, man, give it a year. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's big. This is this is like a culturally iconic yeah, moment, and uh, so so to me, like that's like this song in itself, like kind of fits the theory of man, like Tamil culture is massive, right. and people are really ready to receive, uh, oh, yeah. you know, this type of you know offering, whether it's through music or through community give back or whatever the case may be. So right. my entire theory kind of runs around it, and it's like to be and and this is and there's I can talk about a few different times where you know kind of greatness has just been 
you know, passing through. And, and it's like, you just kind of ask yourself like, wow, like this is just so possible. Like mm -hmm. really wow. you just put the effort in and, and you just surround yourself with the right people, keep the right mentality, like what you want. Like you're, you're removing, you know, bad barriers from your dreams actually being fulfilled 100%. and you got to be conscious of that. Right. So like to me, this moment was just a testament of another testament of, of the journey in itself to know that, man, this is truly possible. Yeah. Man, that's beautiful. really anything is possible. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you for joining us today. Vosier. Yeah. I really do yeah, appreciate you're it. You're putting it on, man, for real. You're really putting it on. If we flip back to the Instagram here, uh, I just want to shout out your Instagram page. You can find Vosie at, at Vosie. Um, here's his Instagram page again. Um, you know, thank you again for coming through and teaching us more about Tamil culture and, um, just showing us this whole new experience, man. This is a uh, truly a learning experience for both of us. For no, real. truly. I, I appreciate the both of y'all for, you know, having me on here. Shout out the untapped potential podcast, you know, for you guys to, you know, sit and listen to my journey and to be able to, you know, to have the patience to learn about my culture, something I'm yeah. truly grateful for. And, uh, I'm grateful, uh, for everyone who, you know, got to tap in today. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Thanks again, Bozy. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in today. Catch us next time. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Instagram and stay tuned.